So just wherever you're. Is that for the guests or is that for us? That's yeah, probably that's for the guests. all for the guests. Uh, we already drank their wine. We drank their wine. <laughs> Nee, je tas is in mijn kamer. Ik, in, ik heb het opgeborgen. Oh. Zodat, uh, ik, heb het voor de... ik kom eraan. Nee, dat moet ik ook niet doen. Ja. Tobias Delius, I play the tenor sax and the clarinet. Hi, my name is uh, Ernst Klerum. I'm a double bass player in the Instant Composer Orchestra. My name is Michael Moore. I play the alto saxophone and the clarinet in yeah. ICD. Mary Oliver, I play violin and viola. My name is Ab Baas, I play tenor saxophone, clarinet, uh, I'm a trombone player called uh, Walter Wierbos and I'm from I live in Amsterdam uh, since uh, 1980. Is it running? It's running. Okay, fine. My name is Han Benning. Um, I'm supposed to play the drums. And it's, it's going, it's doing its thing yeah. now? Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Uh, my name is Susanna Van Cannon. And, uh, and I was born in England I and I live in Amsterdam for over 35 years and now. And I'm from Arcata, California. And I'm originally from San Diego, California, but I live in Amsterdam. I was born in 1942 in Zaandam, um, and that's in the Netherlands. So I'm from there. Oh, where am I from? Oh, I'm from North Carolina. But uh, with a long con convoluted way, I landed in Amsterdam, and I've been here for quite a while. Now. Yeah, when, when I joined the group, that was in 1980. Uh, that's a long time ago, so so I'm a real veteran. I think I started in 38, then I was three years old. And I'm the manager of the ICP orchestra, which is an oxymoron because they are unmanageable. I subbed for various people in the band, and then at a, a certain point, Misha asked me to become like a regular member. Yeah, so like now we're in the. We started today rehearsing with the Instant Compose School, and uh, so that kind of uh, evokes uh, the, the Instant Compose School feelings here. I joined ICP. Um, in 1982, and one of the first things we did was go to Japan. Um, the other saxophone players in the group at the time were Peter Broltzman and Kevin Keshavan Mosley. The first uh, tour I went on with ICP was quite exciting for me, of course, because I it was the group that I wanted to play with the one most. One of the very first concerts with the ICP for me, I think it was 85 or 84. Uh, we had a concert somewhere in Holland, a small village. So, and I never um, forget like one of the first concerts uh, we had. That story is about the, the two fat ladies walking in a lane in England. What I think I find very refreshing at the moment is that there's a that there's a very lively scene of younger musicians who are, who are uh, putting on their own stuff and trying things out, and also. And mixing up with the with the old. I had to go by train also. from Groningen, which is like in the north of the Netherlands, to Amsterdam, and then I should meet Misha at his house, and uh, he should. He, Misha was the dr one of the drivers of one of the cars because there were ten members in the group, 
and there were some cars going to Tilburg. So it was a tour set up by Toshino Ikondo, and he spent about a year organizing this tour. It was very well, very well done, and we had a great time. And they hear a voice like, "Help me, help!" Anyway, me. we're on stage in, uh, and this was in Le Mans, France, yeah. the festival there. I, I did not like very much to to. To get lessons. Uh, we had a concert somewhere in Holland, I, a small village. I was scheduled being in Misha's car with, I remember, uh, Larry Fishkind and um, uh, Kessie van Maslak. So the three of us, we, we gathered there at his house, at the steps of his house, and I was first and I rang the bell, no answer. I thought, oh yeah, maybe Misha's uh, out, or yeah, he comes, he will back. We'll, he will be back in a couple of minutes. We'll do a workshop with Han on our conservatory in the east of Holland. Looking forward to that. We, and it's always a challenge because it's about, well, explaining what is going on in, for example, uh, in St. Composer. I realized a lot of things about Misha real quick. I, I realized that he likes to create tension however and possible. I'm I'm standing next to Misha, so I generally make sure that he's got his set list going and he's got, um, that he knows what's going on. And so they were looking around and it was a bit snowy and still they heard that little voice, help me, help me. And finally they found under a fir tree, they found a tiny little green fox, um, um, frog. We played Reflections. Uh, Misha had made an arrangement of uh, Thelonious Monk's and Reflections. I, and I did not like the idea of the... Of the I, I like to play mm -hmm. piano. I think what's also characteristic of the scene right now is that looking, you know, inventing your own spaces where to, to, to do it and where to, you know, offer it to the audience. Now, uh, in the meantime, Larry was coming uh, with his big tuba and Keshefan and they said, oh yeah, Misha is always, he's always very uh, lazy, blah, blah, blah. Um, let's ring the bell again. Brrr, we ring the bell. Thinking Nothing. about that, <laughs> how can you make things clear about music that we actually, we don't like to talk about in the first place because we prefer to just do it. Uh, he likes to put people together that don't necessarily like each other, for instance. We were going to play a piece of his called Varblefje. And um, he asked me to play a solo. I played a solo uh, following the chord structure. And afterwards he comes to me and says, uh, up, uh, listen, you don't have to play it that way. But it was a kind of weird, you know, we had this appointment at his house and there was no Misha, as one of my first gigs, so I thought, what, what is this? I not have the lessons anymore after the year 40. And the frog said, help me, I'm bewitched. There's, there's obviously not enough established places for, these, for this music to be heard, so one just has to invent something. Yeah. I learned a, a certain aesthetic, and it's kind of a rigorous aesthetic, although at the same time anything can happen. So I get my music ready and set it up, and then I goes, hey Misha, var blefje? And he says, art blakey? And I didn't understand what he, what he was saying. He said, no, you don't have to play it that way you can open it up and uh, uh, and that was a very important uh, important moment because I started realizing that um, it's very important to to tell your own story whatever the situation no, and we is. thought like, yeah what can we do wait just wait no like and, and then like 15 minutes later we thought like no it's, it's he should be back now, like I'm, I was already waiting an hour, something like that, outside. <laughs> uh, no Misha. So we tried to ring the bell again and then the door opened. So it's actually interesting to, to, to because we still play as a group, then to test this material, what is still 
what is really like well but this is a bit outdated or it's not outdated or the, the ideas or the, the, the approach of the music and after <laughs> the war uh, I still didn't want to play uh, pieces uh, from other if you kiss me on my mouth it will be all over and I will be a drummer and I can play concerts all over the world for, for you and I can make you rich any style you want interesting is a word of course interesting can also mean that it's not really happening it's still interesting so it's very very open and very free it's not uh, what we do here is, is not uh, Dogmatic Misha, he way. was in his house. He said, "Yeah, oh uh, yeah, sorry, uh, uh, yeah, I just woke up, <laughs> and it was like five o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> At that time, I didn't realize that his day and night rhythm was completely swapped. Like you know, he, he lived, uh, yeah, uh, from f four or five in the afternoon till the next day uh, in, in the early morning." I, I was only interested in. Uh, in improvisation. So the, the less fat lady looked to the other one and said, please kiss him on his mouth. And we're going to be rich. We have no financial... Um, and I think I'll, I'll bring in some, some of the ICP and thoughts. At that time I thought, well, I play a traditional piece that has a chord structure. Um, let's play sticking to the chord structure and when I played an open piece I would play differently. Well, there, well, there are things that are good and there are things that are bad so in a sense it completely ruined me for a lot of other musical situations. So, it's the standing joke so when we play Varblefia we say Art Blakey and then he'll say Varblefia. Piano was my f first uh, thing to, uh, to, to be interested so in. it keeps going on and on with him. He likes to play that game. And we're going to be rich. We have no financial um, problems anymore in this time. It's going to be fine. And we have a guy with yeah, us, a drummer. This piece of it has been, it's rooted in the 60s, which is great. But now we're in the, already in the next century. Then they were well then to play the piano. That's all right. And then I I played the piano and I had not the same need that I had for, for my uh, improvisations in 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 42 and 3. So fine, and then yeah, Misha said he, said he invited us in his house, like, yeah, come in, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll make some breakfast for me. So, and I, I, he had to shower and everything, but it was like late already. I thought, like, shit, we have to go to the gig in Tilburg, which is, was at that time like a two hour drive. Like, oh, we will be certainly too late. And Misha they didn't worry. He said, oh, relax. Uh, who wants a cup well, of coffee? Well, that was uh, more or less a little bit forgotten. And that made me aware that it's possible to play freely within a certain structure. The bigger lady looked at her very, very angry. And she said, you are it's dumb, right. aren't you? The founders, Misha and Hong, because they they are in the 60s. They had their uh, thing, I suppose. I'm listening to old stuff. What they did in the Misha Mengelberg Quartet with uh, the late Pete Nordak as an alto player. Man, that's incredible. Um, yeah, I and yeah, he had done his shower uh, program. No, that was another uh, uh, half an hour um, later. I had. <laughs> only f interest in playing jazz music. But it is like also a very traditional 50s style quartet. Very inspiring, very good playing of Misha, very sharp, very fresh.
fresh. And, and we were ideas. thinking like, shit, what's happening? And then he said, yeah, I'm going to make some breakfast for myself. You want also something? <laughs> yeah, we said, Misha, we have to go to the gig. Uh, yeah, okay. You can't have much and much and much more money with a talking frog than with a jazz drummer. Thank you. <laughs> you have to, 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 you have had a choice to play the piano, so so play the piano. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's a very old English joke I heard once from Chris Lawrence, a bass player. And I used to tell it also uh, after so or during a solo concert. Like yeah. so, so leave you and then you, it, you, well, you Michel writes his own pieces, totally different pieces, European flavor pieces, maybe kind of marches or waltzes. Or so finally, we got on the road, and it was like just be, uh, half an hour before the concert was supposed to start. You know, like, so we were sitting there in the car and I thought like, oh, what is this? What is this? <laughs> What's happening now? <laughs> and, um, and that helped yeah. me a lot. And I was able to develop my own voice by this um, little meeting with me. And suddenly on the highway, I thought like, yeah, now, now it's about time that we start. So Misha was counting off one, two, three, four, burp, okay start <laughs> of course we were not there so so i, d I didn't play bach or, or mozart or whatever what so you, you 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 work to people you wipe them up and these things by the way do you know this joke and yeah. so, so you it, it, it sort of a, it works like a counterpoint for, for for me and that's what i what i really we arrived want. in tilburg much too late i think one or even two hours later than scheduled, and ev the, the, the room was packed. I played in uh, Mengelberg's place to piano. <laughs> and I remember Han was like with a purple head and completely <coughs> very stressed up, like because Misha was again so very uh, too late. To summarize, I'm having a great time. There were also like Kesje van and Sean Bergen was in the band, they were literally fighting on stage like kicking each other yeah. and the audience thought it, it was like a part of part of the part well, of the band so that's yeah. more or less what I still do <laughs> playing the piano in the so for example when when I lay on the floor or sit on the floor and try it it's you 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 change the acoustics people are not looking and the rest was of uh, course there like, drinking and the audience was there and they they loved it and it was like such a heavy it, concert it's, it's, you, that you, you change the acoustics people are not looking uh, to a guy with a red hat behind the drum kit and so that, uh, that was my first experience with with ICP uh, in the 80s when I when I joined the band and I thought like wow what is this <laughs> that's pretty wild <laughs> but and since since then of course uh, I, I know this the the perspective everything uh, is is in there but you know I was just a, a young kid from the province I didn't know shit or so I was <laughs> immediately in the in the 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 heart of everything. <laughs> Thank you.